Good morning, dear students. Welcome back. I am your physics professor, Dr. Nagraj. This is uh, uh, module four, question number seven, paper two. Uh, this question is on the calculation of Fermi factor. Define Fermi factor and discuss the variation of Fermi factor with temperature. Dear students, Fermi factor is defined as the distribution function, which gives the probability of occupancy of different energy levels at different temperatures. Its maximum value cannot exceed one. And the hundred percent here, Jasti Agangila. And it is given by this formula: F of e is equal to one by e to the power of e minus e of by k t plus one, where e of is Fermi energy. E is the energy level either below Fermi level or above the Fermi level. K is Boltzmann constant. T is absolute temperature. Now let us take three different cases. In the first case, I consider energy level below the Fermi level. So below the Fermi level means e minus e of e is uh, less than uh, zero. That means it is negative. And take temperature zero. So here is the calculation. When you substitute e minus e of by e E minus E F negative and T as zero. This second uh, first term becomes E to the power of minus something by zero. Minus something by zero is nothing but minus infinity. E to the power of minus infinity is a zero. Okay, so therefore it is one by zero plus one. That is one. One means hundred percent. That means any level below the Fermi level are hundred percent occupied. Next second case. Here I take a level above the Fermi level. Above the Fermi level means E greater than zero. Uh, e minus E F greater than zero. That is positive. So in that case, the first term will be E to the power of plus infinity. E to the power of plus infinity is infinity only, and one by infinity is zero. So F of E is zero. That means any energy level above the Fermi level are completely vacant. So zero percent occupancy means vacancy. Okay. Last case. Now this time I take some uh, energy level. Uh, sorry, some other temperature other than zero, and this time energy level corresponds to Fermi level only. And the E is equal to E F, or E minus E F is equal to zero. So in that case, one by this first term will be e to the power of zero by something. Zero by something is zero. So one by e to the power of zero plus one. And we all know e to the power of zero is one. So it is one by one plus one. One by one plus one means half. That is point five. That means Fermi level is fifty percent occupied. That was half filled, half vacant. These results are graphically represented. Look at this green line. This green line is the probability distribution at temperature zero Kelvin. So up to Fermi level it is hundred percent. So it is one. And at Fermi level it drops to zero. Whereas this red curve is a probability distribution curve, that is distribution curve at any other temperature. So at very lower energy level, 100% occupancy. Gradually there will be some vacancy. By the time you come to Fermi level, 50% occupied, 50% vacant. So whatever the electrons which were there earlier here are now above the Fermi level. Fermi level in the Kelagada is there. So all the male ones are only going to occupy that level. Some of the levels are vacant here. Some of the levels are occupied there. So please remember this. Graph carries one mark. You have to draw the graph. Graph of F of E versus energy. Okay, coming to the next one. Explain DC and AC Josephson effect and mention the applications in superconduct. So, application of superconductors in quantum computation. See, there are two types in Josephson effect, DC and AC. When two semiconductor slabs, two semiconductor slabs join together by means of a thin insulating layer, about one to two nanometer thin insulating layer, Cooper pairs will flow from here to there. When they flow, there will be some current. So, current comes without any power supply. Power supply is connect madila between these two pieces. Still, I can have some current flowing in the circuit. This is known as a DC Josephson effect. See. Can Cooper pass from one side tunnel, tunnel under a current that tour can't go do into other side and constitute current that is called super current without any support of EMF. This is known as uh, DC Josephson effect. And the current is given by IJ, IJ junction current or the super current is equal to IC sine phi. You need not have to mention all these things. Just write IJ is equal to IC sine phi, where phi is the phase difference between Cooper pass coming from this side to that side. See DC Josephson effect or AC Josephson effect essentially. Actually consists of what is called junction. See, this is one uh, superconducting piece. This is another superconducting piece. Between them, there is some insulating layer. Cooper pairs go from here to here, right? They enter. So, from Cooper uh, superconductor one to superconductor two, when the Cooper pairs travel, there will be some phase difference. That phase difference is phi, and uh, it is either maximum or minimum. It all depends upon the thickness of the insulating layer. Okay, this is DC Josephson effect. Coming to AC Josephson effect. If we apply DC voltage across the junction, no, D. In the case of DC, there is no power supply connected. So between this junction 
uh, sorry, this superconductor and this superconductor, there is a layer, but it, I, there is no power supply connected between these two. If I connect a power supply DC source uh, between these two, then what happens? There will be flow of charges, that means Cooper pairs. This time I get AC current, uh, that means DC power supply produces AC current. Uh, AC current will be having certainly some frequency, that frequency is given by this formula, that is 2 EV divided by H, where V is applied voltage, E is the charge, and H is the Planck's constant. That is the AC Josephson effect. So, AC na lena agate, we apply DC power supply and we get AC current. Whereas in DC, we don't apply any voltage at all, but still we get the uh, current. So, in DC power Josephson effect, Cooper pairs travel into the junction and they produce uh, what is called a alternating current, induces additional phase difference and an alternating current is generated. This is known as AC Josephson effect. See, just you write the definition write the formula so new new is nothing but frequency of ac source and I explain terms in the formula frequency of alternating current is is directly proportional to the applied voltage if you increase the voltage frequency also increases now coming to the applications of superconductors superconductors are uh, used in designing of a device called squid squid stands for superconducting quantum interference device and the squids are used in the designing of charge qubit flux qubit and phase qubit Qubit. Qubits are nothing but uh, building blocks of the uh, quantum computers. Using qubits, we produce what is called processes, uh, microprocessors. And these microprocessors are made up of superconductors. Therefore, we call them as superconducting processors, uh, quantum computation processors. So, superconductors are like conductors are essential for classical computers. Superconductors are essential for quantum computers. With this, I move on to question number 7C. Uh, calculate the probability of occupation of energy level 0 0.02 to electron volt above the Fermi level at 27 degree centigrade. Dear students, first of all, you have to check whether E minus EF is positive or negative here. When he says it is above, definitely E minus EF is positive, that is 0 0.02 to electron volt. Convert now itself into joule into 1.6 into 10 power minus 19. And temperature is in Kelvin, sorry, centigrade at 273, it becomes Kelvin, so 300 Kelvin. Now, F of E we have to find out. So, first let us calculate E to the power of E minus EF divided by KT. So, if you find out this, then you can use the formula F of E is equal to 1 by E to the power of E minus EF divided by KT plus 1. So, you will get the answer. Okay, therefore, I proceed further with the E minus EF by KT calculation. That is 0 0.02 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 divided by K is 1.38 into 10 power minus 23 into temperature is 300. Okay, let me do this calculation first. 0 0.02 into 1.6 to the power of minus 19 is equal to divided by 1.38 to the power of uh, minus 23 into 300 Kelvin. So, this comes out to be 0 0.773. Okay. So, E minus EF by KT is 0 0.773. Now, E to the power, of, I call this whole thing as X. So, E to the power of X, that is a shift LN of this is 2.16, 2.166. Therefore, F of E is equal to 1 by E to the power of X plus 1. X and the E minus EF by KT and the, that is 1 divided by 2.166 plus 1. Okay, plus 1 and then reciprocal of this comes out to be 0.315. So, this is 0 0.315. In terms of percentage, it is 31.5%. So, this is the calculation that means 31.5 percent occupancy above the Fermi level at uh, room temperature. Well, let me go ahead with the next uh, numeric, next problem, uh, sorry, next question. This is about Meissner effect. Describe Meissner effect and hence classify superconductors into soft and hard superconductors using MH graph. MH and the high H and the magnetization versus uh, intensity of the magnetic field. I think I already explained Meissner effect in the previous uh, paper. I just read it out. See what happens normally when superconductor is kept in the external magnetic field. If you keep a superconductor in the external magnetic field, it will allow magnetic lines to pass through. When, when the temperature is greater than critical value. If you reduce the temperature below critical value, then all the magnetic lines are thrown out of the specimen. So, they cannot enter the specimen. 
so this is uh, possible only when temperature is less than tc and applied field is less, less than hc okay that is critical field this was noticed by meissner hence it is called meissner effect according to meissner effect all superconductors behave like a diamagnets so idanna nan alli wordings alli helidini see when a superconductor above the critical temperature is placed in external magnetic field it allows the lines to pass through illi ella lines annu allow madutte if now it is cooled below critical temperature lines are expelled from the interior olagade serkondiro lines kuda horagade bandibidutte this is known as meissner effect so please draw this diagram i forgot to give the diagram here please draw the diagram diagram ge one mark irutte well now coming to type 1 and type 2 suppose if the lines are allowed to pass through and expelled completely from the specimen when temperature is below critical value it is a perfect meissner effect and uh, the field at which magnetic field magnetic field at which superconductor lose its property is called critical field based upon the critical field based upon whether say, meissner effect is exhibited or not we classify superconductors into two groups namely type 1 and type 2 here is the explanation type 1 ivella notes allu kuda ide superconductors having only one critical field is known as type 1 in these superconductors transition from superconducting state to normal conducting state occurs sharply at hc andre magnetic field see uh, the na um, intensity of magnet actually it should be minus m but i have written it as minus i no problem so negative magnetization increases and the superconductivity increase uh, will be there up to hc afterwards it becomes normal conductor so in superconductors dipoles will be oppositely oriented if you apply magnetic field like this dipoles will be like this they are totally opposite so when you keep on increasing the magnetic field this opposite orientation keeps on increasing up to one stage afterwards suddenly they flip they convert and orient in the direction of the magnetic field once they orient in the direction of magnetic field we can say it is no more a superconductor so normal conductor this happens sharply at hc if it happens sharply at hc it is called type 1 superconductor so that is the meaning of the first sentence next they exhibit complete meissner effect agle helidala either they allow the lines or they don't allow lines there is no bargain partial allowing lines it's allowing lines partially is not possible so they are type 1 superconductors and uh, they are called, they they have very low critical field this hc value is about 0.01 0.001 tesla athara irutte therefore they are called as a soft superconductors andre we can destroy the superconducting property very easily anta coming to hard just i read out just quite opposite nodi illi enagutte negative magnetization keeps on increasing but suddenly it will not fall like this that downfall starts at hc1 and gradually decreases and finally it becomes zero at a very larger value hc2 therefore we say in type 2 superconductors there are two critical fields hc1 and hc2 so that is a definition in fact superconductors having two critical fields are known as type 2 superconductors in these superconductors partial meissner effect that's what i told you magnetic lines of force start penetrating slowly see magnetic lines of force will start penetrating slowly slowly okay at some region at some region okay and in increase then all the lines will enter the specimen entire specimen is now filled with the magnetic lines beginningly magnetic lines will not pass through they are going out of the specimen with the, with increase in h value this is at hc1 less than h is less than hc1 this is hc1 gina sulpa jaasti hc2 gina kadame aitha ee madhyadalli magnetic lines nidanike onnonde line thoorkond hoglikke try martave kelu lines thoorok agodilla so therefore i said there is a partial meissner effect okay so i will continue for the next type 2 superconductors exhibit three states okay namely superconducting state normal conducting state mixed state this yellow region is superconducting state blue region is mixed state means partial meissner effect next it is normal state well hc2 is very much greater than hc1 therefore they are also called as hard superconductors one nalak nalak difference galanna nenpitkoli idu thuda thuma important matte expected question distinguish between type 1 and type 2 superconductors anta kelo chance ide okay next assumptions of quantum free electron theory this is a very simple question uh, it is only descriptive no explanation is required 
so assume as assumption first assumption energy levels are discrete athwa quantized next distribution of electrons in this is governed by pauli's exclusion principle electrons above the fermi level are considered as free electrons and they collide above fermi level only they collide and among the collision electron electron collision is neglected electron and atom collision is considered and these free electrons are assumed to be traveling in a constant potential inside the metal and attraction between free electrons Uh, and lattice points and repulsion between electrons neglected electron attra bandaga repel agutala adana neglect madidare so these are the main important assumptions the main adrallu thumba important idu energy level is quantized distribution is based on the pauli's exclusion principle up to fermi level electrons cannot behave like free electrons they behave as free only below the, above the fermi level in the remaining ella it is same as classical free electron theory means they collide against each other collisions are considered kelu collisions anna ignore mad टेमरेचर TC is given as 7.2 Kelvin. Okay, next to HC at zero Kelvin is equal to 50 into 10 power 3. Calculate HC at some other temperature that is 6 Kelvin. Equation HC at some other temperature is equal to HC not into 1 minus T by TC whole square. This is the equation. So just to substitute that is 50 into 10 to the power of 3. Into one minus T is six, T C is seven point two whole square. So that is equal to simplify six by seven point two, six divided by seven point two square of that. Okay, and one minus of this, like this. Okay, into fifty comes out to be fifteen point two eight. Fifteen. 15.28 into 10 to the power of 3 tesla so magnetic field is reduced now that means we can spoil the superconducting property either by applying 15 into 10 power 3 tesla that is at a Zero Kelvin or 15.28 into 10 power 3 at uh, uh, 6 Kelvin. That means as temperature increases, magnetic field required to spoil the superconducting property decreases. Uh, so this is a TC. Uh, sorry, this is a TC and this is HC naught. This is superconducting state. This is normal conducting state. Uh, well, dear students, I stop this video here. I come back to the with, to you in with the next video in the ne uh, with the next module in the next video. Thank you.